do you get discouraged as you try to convince people about God? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection question for today. Ray Sexton, a psychiatrist, tells about a troubled man who went to see a psychiatrist. After customary introductions, the psychiatrist asked him to tell him his problem. Embarrassedly, the patient reported that he had difficulty when he arrived in his home. He would walk into his bedroom thinking that something was under his bed. Consequently, he would crawl under his bed, look thoroughly and seeing nothing, he would then be hit with the idea that something was on top of his bed. Quickly, he would look to the top of his bed closely and see nothing. Again, the idea would hit him that something was under his bed. He would then drop down under his bed, looking thoroughly and see nothing. He would feel that something was on top of his bed again. This would go on over and over. Top underneath, top underneath, top underneath. The gentleman told the psychiatrist that this was driving him crazy. He needed some relief in order to carry on his other business. The psychiatrist reassured him that he had a correctable problem, but that it would require weekly visits to dig out the deeper-rooted conflicts. The cost would be $100 per visit per week over a period of about two years. Somewhat dazed, the patient left the office without making his appointments. He was not seen or heard from by the psychiatrist for about six months. The psychiatrist accidentally ran into him at a neighborhood restaurant the psychiatrist asked him, Joe, I haven't heard from you. Whatever happened? The patient said, Well, when you told me how long it would take and the expense, I was devastated. I immediately went to the bar to drink away my despair, but the bartender cured me in one session for $10. I haven't had a problem since. The psychiatrist asked him, What in the world did the bartender do? Joe happily responded, The bartender told me, to go home and saw the legs off my bed. In today's gospel reading, Jesus sends out 72 of his disciples two by two to preach the gospel or the good news of God's love and salvation in towns and villages to prepare the way for his coming. The number 70 and 72 have become a symbolic number in the Bible. 70 descendants of Noah, 70 descendants of Jacob began a new life with him in Egypt from Israel. Seventy elders accompany Moses up the mountain of God to learn the new covenant with Yahweh. There are 2.4 billion Christians globally, about one-third of the total population of the world, which is 7.8 billion, and the largest among the Christian denominations is the Catholic religion, making up 1.2 billion or 50% of all Christians. Our Lord was aware that some of them will become successful in their mission and some will not. Many will be rejected, laughed at, and labeled as old-fashioned, impractical, dreamers, lunatics, and so on and so forth. Yet the message needed to be delivered, that the kingdom of God is near and salvation only comes through Jesus Christ. His great commandment of love for God and neighbor will lead anyone who embraces this nearer to attaining the kingdom. We are all being sent to proclaim today and be relentless Two by two as husband and wife, as parents and children, as single people, witnessing in word, action, and life. It all started out with twelve, eleven of whom died a martyr's death. Only John the Beloved died of old age. Yet we are not to be discouraged, regardless of how we are received. The way we relate to people should not be determined by how they relate to us. We are to witness faithfully even if we are not appreciated. We should not be discouraged at all because what matters to our Lord is not the result. Of course, it matters up to a certain point, but the effort we put in, if the goal to us is very clear and we are fully convinced, we must carry on. We may not die physically, although we may get tired but not exhausted, but there will be many deaths we will experience as we face disappointments from people who will turn their backs on us, who will use and abuse us, who will threaten us and laugh at us and hurt us, but we should not be discouraged. Grace accompanies those who seek it from our Lord. Grace is what allows us to wade through the sea of disappointments that may come our way. The storms will come, but we can never be moved to give in, to failure, or to give up on Christ, for we are firmly anchored on account of His grace. For us, what matters is to be joyful in all circumstances, as Paul teaches us in 1 Thessalonians. He also reminds us that a prayerful life is our shield in the field of spiritual battle, 
We are all meant to become ambassadors for Christ. It is up to us to fill this calling. We just need to remember that our names are written in heaven as the gospel reminds us and that it is more than enough to keep us energized, enthusiastic, and unwavering in our mission. Let us pray in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, when the pangs of disappointment hound me, as I bring souls to you, grant me the grace to just love, for I know love conquers all. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. May your Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit be in. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.